Kills the Cougars five, but you see Andrew Ruffin once again working his way towards the sideline and leaps up the end of the taken out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Spurts. It's our um, ECU football uh, roundup that we normally do. My name is Brendan. Um, we're here back again, ready to sum up uh, the past three games that we've missed. We haven't had a home game in a while, fellas. Yeah. And so we're going to do the you know, basic introductions, and then we'll get into the game recaps before we start to predict this Tulsa game coming up. Uh, my name's Brendan. I work for the East Carolinian. I'm the sports editor. Um, we have paper every Tuesday and Thursdays they come out. So, you know, come get some of those papers when you're ready. And I am, uh, I am Anthony. I do Inside the Lines with Jackson. Unfortunately, Jackson is not with us today, uh, but we have a replacement here with uh, Raymond, and he's going to uh, take us through the recap for uh, this week and the uh, past couple weeks for ECU uh, football. But uh, my show, Inside the Lines, 12 to 1 on Fridays. Having said that, Raymond and I will be doing a show next semester, Mondays and Fridays, 11 to 12. So, Raymond? Uh, yep, I'm looking things. forward to uh, doing a show with you, man. I think we got a great text burst coming up. I'm Roddy Ray Ray. I'm usually on from three to four Mondays and Fridays, but semester coming to a close. I think our show time should be about 11 and 12. 11 and 12 is correct. Yes, sir. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, and I'm Daniel Shepard. I'm the sports chief at the East Carolinian, so uh, make sure you read the paper Tuesdays and Thursdays. Don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have three, not one, not two. But three, we're really getting our numbers in here, guys. Three really games good. that we've missed. Yeah. So any big, any big takeaways that we've had from those past three games? Well, so far, like you said, three games here. Uh, we've been a little bit away from the camera, a lot of road games. Um, mm -hmm. But with all that being said, we had some fight against number 17 Cincinnati, 46-43, to 43, only lost by three points. Holton Aylers, 535 passing yards, four touchdowns. Uh, he was immaculate in yeah, that game, was. a yeah. game we should have very well easily won. Mm -hmm. um, and then to round up that one, number 25 SMU, the week after that, Holton wasn't messing around there as we lost that one as well, 59-51. to But Holton Ayers went for 498 passing, six touchdowns. That's a program record, so he has been oh, yeah. feeling himself right in the hot hand. Yeah, indeed. It's, I think, a, a clear picture of, you know, we, we, might have, we talked about it a little bit off camera. You know, we didn't put it in text birds, a couple text birds ago, but I was a little sketchy on Holton Aylers and what he can do with the ball. And man, did he just hear that somehow and just prove it me, prove me oh, wrong. Yeah, he turned for it sure. around. For sure, you know what I say, we're not going to say it on camera, but <laughs> for certainly, he has really proved me wrong. He's been lighting it up on the offensive end. I think just the defensive end is what's really been, we need to supplement now, which is strange because it's usually been, I feel like it's usually been flipped yeah. in East Carolina okay. football. It's right. been, we need more offense. We're doing great defensively so it's interesting for me any other any other big takeaways from either of you guys next I time? mean other than just we're just doing a great job through the air right now oh, with, absolutely. with, with Holton mm -hmm. and uh, the rush the running game isn't as isn't that bad either nope. to put it that way so we are just airing it out uh, in all way always possible and like I said he's just feeling himself he's doing much better he didn't do that bad either against uh, last week when we played UConn uh, we got the W there, 31-24. Yes. Mm -hmm. He went 374 uh, in the air. Uh, not too bad, but compared to his two weeks prior, that's a little bit of a down week for him, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, 14th in the nation now, passing yards, over 3,000. Um, you know, you got Darius Pinnock's back now, rushed for over 100 yards and two touchdowns against UConn. Yep. Yep. So it uh, be interesting to see if they can carry that going forward. Absolutely. And uh, now let's look at Tulsa and ECU this week. Tulsa three and eight, ECU four and seven. This is the final game of the year. Home. Do you think we have the juice and the motivation to get a nice win here? I think we do. I think we do. I mean, you, you got to look at the big picture here. This is our second week in a row that we've played a conference opponent that has a record that is worse than ours, theoretically. Yeah. Well, right. not theoretically. That's that's how the record sits. So I think uh, coming off that momentum, it's our first time. You're gonna help me with the stacks. I know you know it better than I do. This is our first time having two away conference wins since. No, this is the first conference road win against road UConn wins. since 2017. Yes. First time with multiple road wins since 2015. 15. Yes. Right. I knew I knew he knew it better than me. I knew it. <laughs> first I knew first it. conference road win since 2017. Okay, that's cool. Okay, it's been, it's so that's a big. Been a it's it's been, been a while. Minute. So that's just I think evidence that we're really on the the upswing here. 
with with our with our team. We got to ride up the momentum. Road games used to just be, you know, oh, we're on the road. Oh, we'll just chalk it up as a chalk it up as a loss. <laughs> you know, take the over. You know, whatever. It's just probably not going to be a good game. But. And this is actually the last time we're going to be experiencing UConn as well. I believe they are. Yes. Departing from the leaving. conference. They're going independent in football. I think from what yeah, we were, yeah. what we believe. So it'll be interesting. But regardless, we're not talking about UConn anymore. Tulsa. About Tulsa. Tulsa. Yes. Talking about Tulsa. I think Holt Naylor's, if he just continues to do, to what, do he's what he's been doing, been doing. Even in this past game, no, he didn't throw for 500 yards, but I think it's pretty hard to expect that every week from somebody, regardless of if they're traditionally right. consistent on that. So I think he'll still have probably over 100, maybe over 200 passing yards, hopefully. My biggest takeaway from Holt, I think he's just a lot more smarter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's not making silly mistakes. You yeah, know, he's, he's, he's a lot more toned down. Mm, um, yeah. Not, you know, he had two picks last week. Uh-huh. But prior to that, I mean, he threw six touchdowns. Yeah. He uh-huh. threw four touchdowns. I yeah. mean, he's airing it out. He's making wiser decisions. Um, you know, when he's scrambling out of the pocket, doesn't make a, a bad decision. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. just cleaned oh, up yeah. that game a little bit mm-hmm. in those facets. And those are the little things that are going to make you better. Yeah. And I think this is a matter of experience because, you know, when you looked at some of the early games of the season – um, I was the William and Mary game. One thing I noticed about that game was it was so close throughout the entirety of the game, and there were so many attempts to where we went deep down the field. It felt like if we connected on even one of those, right. game would have been over. Yeah, and mm-hmm. we're making those plays now that we weren't making them at the beginning of the season. And it's mm-hmm. it's beautiful to see it all come Change, together. Changes the whole complexion of the game and or Definitely. season. So right. yeah, and I saw exactly. I saw a stat uh, just kind of go along with that: sixteen straight red zone conversions in the last four games. For ECU. Wow. So uh, I think that really speaks to That's the ability huge. to really punch the ball into the end zone or at least kick a field goal when. Changes everything. Yeah, when they get down. Yeah, so. it does. It because does. those plays early on, like in the NC State game, it mm-hmm. looked like we were doing great early on. Oh, yeah. The fumble in the end yeah, zone. Fumble. Yeah. It, it killed us. Drive. The oh, yeah. momentum has really mm-hmm. gotten in ECU's yeah, favor. you, you right. got to be able to convert on those got big to. things. Definitely, even, has, definitely yeah. has shifted. I mean, even uh-huh. though we aren't necessarily – Tacking on the the win column, mm-hmm. you know. So in our last three games, we've only won one game, but we have been in the fight all the way through, all, yeah, all the way for four yeah. quarters. So that's the fight that we haven't been seeing that we need to be seeing. Yeah, and it's been been shown so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, indeed. And that's um, the thing about this. This is a completely new team from when I, you know, I'm I'm a senior. I've been here for. God, this is going to be four years, I guess. And so the team that I'm used to watching, I'm not used to all this fight even when they're down and continually to play until the very final seconds of the game. So this is just maybe that's a just treat. Mike Houston just Mike, know, putting maybe, a little bit more pressure maybe. on his players. Yeah, I think it's a, you know, a, a change of philosophy, you yeah. know, I think is always good, I think. But I would definitely agree, yeah, yeah, for sure. Even though it's been later on in the season, it, maybe we finish up strong here. So yes, do we indeed. get the win against Tulsa here? How do we feel about this week in particular, mm-hmm. last final home game? Yeah, I think I think we get the win. We've we've had some great momentum, even over the past Three games, some great momentum. Whether or not it's been a win or a loss, just that in itself, we've been fighting till the end. I think it's it's gonna become. It's not like we're getting smoked out. No, Do not that, at all. Yeah. We even we even gotten blown out, really. And so it's. I think we're gonna start seeing this trend in this game and maybe in games past or games in the future. Excuse me. It's going to be hard for teams to come and play in Dowdy Ficklin once this team gets it together. You know, I think a good testament to that was our, you know, not to switch sports, but our baseball team. You know, once we were starting to really get everything together and playing well, it's hard for teams to come here and play. And so I think that home momentum is going to really carry us over over Tulsa in this one. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I chalk up a win here for us uh, for this week. Um, final home game, crowd's going to be into it. Like mm-hmm. you said, we have the mon- momentum, we have the juice. I think we're going to come out fire, and I say we win by at least a touchdown would be mm-hmm. my prediction here. Yeah, yeah I think we're, what, five-and-a-half, six-point favorite? Or point underdogs at home against Tulsa. Yeah. Um, Houston had high praise for Tulsa today on uh, the conference call. He said if they were in any other division, they'd probably be a 10-win team. Um, one thing I did see going through their stats, uh, 128th in the nation of 70 or 97 penalties against them this year. A lot of penalties. Yeah. So it'll uh, be interesting to see if they can get their – team discipline back on track against ECU, but it seems like they've struggled a lot against the rush, almost 200 yards allowed against uh, on the ground mm. against them. Okay. So Darius Pinnock's back, I think uh, I think we see a lot of him. You see you see a lot of run coming up this week. How do, how do we feel about the passing game? Does it continue on, a lot of ball in the air, or not so much? You think it's I more, think it more ground game? Uh, Houston will always be balanced in what he does, uh, play calling-wise. How is the defense through with passing? 
as far as allowing passing yards and, and touchdowns and whatnot? Uh, they're they're top 50 in the nation. Uh, they they control it pretty yards. well. So yeah. maybe we don't see that 500-yard passing game from Holton this week. I don't think so. I think you, my prediction is you'll see a big game out of Darius Penix okay. uh, on the ground. And you might see a big game out of Holton Nailers, but maybe in the run department. Not yeah. so much yeah, passing Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Ryan? Well, i got to say, I like this Tulsa team. I like ECU to get the win, but I think Tulsa at – Three and eight now. They're one of the best three and eight teams you're gonna see. They got that big use uh, upset win against UCF not too long ago. Right. You can't just write this team off. That being said, ECU has a lot going in its favor in this last week. Uh, we're coming off of a big win. Uh, first time we got four wins in the season in three years. That's really big for us. And Mike Houston, he gets on us, guys. I think above everything else, the message this week for Mike Houston, his team is gonna be. We're not, you know, jogging to the finish line. We're sprinting through it. So oh, yeah. I like ECU. I think it's going to be a close game. But yeah. I like ECU to win, like he said, by about a touchdown. I see. I say a touchdown. That's my uh, I would agree. Yeah, it's going to be a close game. But uh, I think a uh, late, late touchdown gets them to win, just like against UConn. Beautiful. All right. Well, I think that's all we, I think that's all we have for this Tech Sports. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Go Pirates. Go Pirates. Go Pirates. Go Pirates.